We welcome to the Only Fools and Horses podcast, Edwin Trotter Morris, who does Only Fools and Horses charity auctions. He's also a big fan. How's it going? Bonsoir, bonsoir. Good evening, uh, good evening, Chris. Very nice cocktail. What have you got? Nice Malibu and Cherry Aid to start off the evening. Oh, lovely, yes. Chubby. Yeah, I love what? Pina Coladas myself. Yeah, Pina Colada, you can't beat that. The um, the only one I wouldn't try is a Bailey's and Cherry Aid because that doesn't work. Um, I tried it once at the um, Hull Convention. I took my own cherry aid with me because bars don't normally sell cherry aid. Um, and I asked the lady for um, a Bailey's and I tried it and she gave me a strange look. And it it looked like something off you get out of a extra dress driving. It, it's a very weird concoction. And yeah, <laughs> it's something to behold. You didn't hear, did you? Thursday night, some burp nicked me cigarette machine. Never. Yeah. What about that sonic burglar alarm, Delboy soldier? Oh, yeah. <laughs> They nick that and all. <laughs> you got me a bit. You got me a bit emotional watching that one, Chris. Starting off with that one, um, strained relations is the answer. Um, right. Every it's the way it tugs on my heartstrings whenever I watch this episode because losing both my parents last um, six uh, six odd years really. When I when I watch this episode. Um, especially when Del Boy puts his hand on uh, Grandad's chair, it just makes me think of my parents. And it's um, the acting in that is second to none, to be fair. But um, yeah, you started off with that when you got me going already, Chris. Um, <laughs> but strange relations. Well done. Yeah, I mean that's probably one of the saddest scenes, isn't it? In Only Fools and Horses. I mean, you look at the acting. I mean, obviously, I've. I've Heard David Jason talk. Uh, so David Jason talked about it, and he he says that because obviously they hadn't long obviously buried Leonard for real, um, and the emotions. I mean, you couldn't act that. That was so heartfelt, um, and yeah, that's. I get shivers just talking about it. Sometimes it's such, and I think if you've lost a parent as well, or you've lost someone close to you, I think that episode. I've spoken to a lot of people, um, and it really does. It gets you. It pulls at the heartstrings, doesn't it? Because I'm a free agent, Trig, right? Wherever I lay my hat, right? That's my home. That's the sort of guy I am. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a hat now then, have you, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Trig, it's, it's a saying. It's not you, Chris, but when you watch an episode, even though you've seen it a hundred times, it just makes you... Oh, it just makes me straight off. Um, that one is May the Force Be With You. Correct, yeah, two out of two. That's kind of an underrated scene, isn't it, with Trigger, that one? Tell me, Chris, who nicked the microwave? One last time, who was it? <laughs> <laughs> um, Slater's face, oh, that was absolutely, the timing of it was absolutely brilliant again. But yeah, may the force be with you. And that has one of the best endings, doesn't it, as you say? Who nicked it? Yeah, I did, yeah. Quite often, I don't know if you thought it, a lot of the episodes end when Del Boy's just about in front and he gets pulled back. Like a losing streak for me is one of my favourite episodes. And you think Del Boy's got him at the end, and he did to a point, but then there was that twist where Rodney dropped him in it. But this one, you know, right at the end, Slater's got him, he thinks, and then, all, and then Del Boy gets him right at the end. That one, uh, I've watched it a hundred times and I just know what's coming, but it just makes me laugh. Who are you taking? Cassandra? No, not Cassandra. It's a girl. A girl? A girl? <laughs> uh, a girl! First one, I think... Do you know, I watched it. You know when you watch some episodes and you think it could be... Because some are very similar, how they're... Between one or two for me. I was only watching this the other day as well. I'm going to go for... I'm not going right on this. Is it Rodney Come Home? Yes, well done. You were in two minds then. Which was the other one you thought it might have been? The other one I think it was. The one with... Um, oh, what's her name? Um, the Bunny Boiler? 
No, uh, the one with um, Trudy. Oh, uh, is that not that? No, is that the same episode? Is it? I don't think it was. Where's the one when Del hot dog, and he says, um, "Oh, I think episode that is now." But it's like when I'm watching some of these, you you first see it and you think it could be something else, and then literally something clicked in my head. Um, I don't think of that episode now. You watch it come up as a question in a minute. Um, and this is the same episode where um, it's where um, Del Boy sells the uh, the musical Del Boy chimes. You know the, the door chimes. They play. Yeah, you know, oh, I think it's not the same episode. Or is that a different? No, it's the same episode, isn't it? I think. I think it might be. Yeah. But when he he says it, he says, um, <laughs> "Yeah, you know what it's me. Can play Mexico forever and come through the oh, It's just. Yeah, that is absolutely brilliant. I actually wouldn't mind having one of them, but I think my significant other would, uh, yeah. She <laughs> would be a be... fan of that, yeah. I wonder if exactly. they exist, if you can still get them. I mean, they must have existed at one stage. But I, my significant other, she's very she's very um, supportive of my offer. Um, but, but people say I've got a problem. I ain't got a problem. I like it. Yeah, you're just a big fan. You know, yeah. like we are. I mean... <laughs> They were rough people. They were good people. During the Blitz, some of the men painted a sign on the roof of a warehouse so that the Luftwaffe pilots could see it. It said, Dear Adolf, you can break our windows, but not our hearts. Look at what they've done to it now. Sorry, I picked another sad one, but uh, yeah, that's clip number four. Back to the episode, I love that episode because it's the episode where Del Boy, um, one of my favourite, um, John Chalice, um, um, may he rest in peace, the legend that is John Chalice, I'll uh, do a cheers to John. Um, but the bit right at the start of the episode, when Del Boy rings him and he says, um, can you get someone to look at my van? And John says, I know, just the person, he just had a family bereavement. And then the bit he says, what's your, well, he said, what, what is your, what is your price range? 400. You can't get a walking frame for 400. Uh, that, absolutely. And the episode is full of an amazing, well, yeah, it's just joke after joke, really. Um, but the episode is, he ain't heavy, he's an Yes, well done. Four out of four, you're doing well. Yeah, that's another emotional scene with Uncle Albert and... Yeah, it was kind of. It was good they found him because he he went off, didn't he? Yeah, well, I don't know whether you actually both granddad in, and I think it was the episode the Russians are coming. They both had a line about the war. So granddad was, um, I think granddad's line was something along the lines they promised us home fit for heroes, and then obviously with Uncle Albert then, and that always gets me when uh, granddad says that, and then obviously then Uncle Albert says right at the end. Um, I think he says something along the lines that um, you may break, you may um, break our windows, but you never break our hearts. That and the emotional acting of um, Buster Merrifield doing that was absolutely so believable. You know, yeah, yeah, so, and they probably both had been through it as well. Um, there was that story, wasn't there, about Grandin? Did you see that in the uh, uh, the yeah, newspapers? When, yeah, because he met. Because he met Hitler once, and he said, "If he knew what he knew there, he would have either shot him." Basically, um, but because um, a lot of people forget that Leonard was a very talented actor, well, but he did a lot early before only for some horses. Mm. Um, so, but yeah, that was yeah, that was quite a. I think he was a very. I read a few articles about uh, Leonard Pierce and some of the things he went through, but that's one. Yeah, very iconic. Yeah, he shook hands with someone at. Uh, and he destroyed Britain, basically. So, yeah. But, yeah, imagine um, that. But he never would have realised, obviously, because it was years before, and, yeah, unbelievable. Exactly, yeah. Great. Well, that's four out of four so far. On to clip number five. Del boy, yeah. I'd like to be cremated. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to wait till morning, because it'll be closed now. <laughs> I know this episode, but I'm trying to think of the name of it because it. I'll give you yeah, some thinking time. I think I've got it. This one is 
Have you seen the episode I'm thinking of? I love the line where, um, girl boy, I want to be cremated. Oh, you have to wait till tomorrow. Cause <laughs> if that's the one I'm thinking of. Um, and that would be um, Homesick. Correct. Well done. Yeah, Homesick. Five out of five. And I think the other line in that show I love is when he says about um, what the ballet dancer, no, the horse. I think the, the, uh, the, the Jinsky. Jinsky. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the doctor, because he says, oh, he's got legs like Nijinsky. Yeah. Well, yeah, the other favourite bit in that episode, I've actually got um, a very close friend of mine who was like a brother to me. He's uh, very talented what he does. And he got a, in that episode, um, Grandad gives Rodney something to remember him by, the cigarette case. And then he says, what, it saved his life? No, it ricocheted up his nose and blew his brains out. <laughs> well, my, um, my friend Alan, um, which is like a brother to me, he, he's very talented. He managed to get one. He's actually put the dent in it, very similar to how oh, it wow. was. And, and that's one of my treasured items. But yeah, I love that line. And, and like, of, you course, know of course, Dale has the next line, doesn't he? He says it could have gone the other way and it could have ruined his life. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fighting of John Sullivan, just genius, genius. Yeah, I mean, but we always say, I mean, all fans do, don't they? Without John Sullivan, obviously, we wouldn't have it. We wouldn't have the show, would we? And just a genius, wouldn't he? Everything he did. Well, just what I was watching, it was very strange. I was watching um, who, wants be, who Wants to Be a Millionaire the other night. And that was, apparently, that was meant to be Dave, Sir David's last episode. He was thinking of leaving. It's hard to think that if he left that... The episodes and everything we've had since then, very strange. Because I don't think he'd have got, if so they had left, I don't think they would have got someone else in. I think they would have stopped it, I think. Um, I don't know what other people would think, but I think if he had have left then, I don't know whether they would have replaced today because it was so, yeah, that was they series five. That was series five. I just don't think they could have got anyone in. It would have been, I mean, it was very really thing bringing Uncle Albert in, but he played a different character, so he wasn't replacing someone. Because you couldn't, it said you couldn't have got another actor to play Granddad. It just wouldn't have worked. Um, yeah. But, oh yeah, uh, both but... both were brilliant. You can't really decide. I did put that on our Facebook page, but it is the impossible question, isn't it? You know, who who did? You... It's more who was your favourite kind of thing because both of them were fantastic. They had different characters, didn't they? So, I mean, I'd love to see an episode with them both in. That would have been, I think, because they'd have bounced off each other. Um, it's because you hear obviously Uncle Albert talk about stories about um, it's meant he mentions obviously his brother and that and uh, yeah it very um, I think that would have been something quite special to be fair and actually when you see photos people have doctored Doctor. photos to put the it, it looks like it should be drink I had with you last week you knocked me sideways hardly well, touch the stuff these days and Pam my wife she doesn't really agree with drinking yeah well perhaps you ought to out her you know get yourself a younger model yeah but she's been with me for so long now she's almost one of the family <laughs> he says it before i hate these people who just do things for effect and then he puts the cocktail glass with all the bits of that um so that would have been um when um, rodney cassandra got married uh, little problems yeah correct yeah. six out of six that's a brilliant ep episode isn't it with the driscoll brothers that's actually one of my favorites that one it actually, and I know you use quite a lot about yourself, Chris, but I use a lot of the sayings from the show every day. I mean, I say, oh, shut up, you tart, quite a lot. Um, and, but one of my best, I said it to my work colleague the other day, because we were having a bit of banter in work. But I said, listen, I do the thinking, you don't. Uh, and I absolutely, yeah, that. There's so many classic lines that you can get away with, really. Um, uh, it's just, I mean, literally, it's come, it's come a habit now. The last three years in particular, without knowing it, I quite often end a phone call um, with Bonjour, and if someone and if some people don't know it, they're thinking, "What the hell?" But yeah, <laughs> it's just, just just makes it more funny, really. <laughs> Still, it's a nice little dream while it lasted, eh? Yeah. Well, I'm going to turn around now, and I'm going to walk out that door, and I ain't going to look back. Can I have a bloody eye? Can I convince someone that you <laughs> that my granddad was Louis Armstrong? Oh, <laughs> great line, isn't it? One Chris is, if I pronounce it right, is with um, Prussia with love. Yeah, from Prussia with love. Yeah, well done. Great episode that one. 
One of my favourite little bits in there, quickly to say, is when um, Uncle Albert walks into the kitchen when Rodney and Dalboy in the kitchen. He says, "I don't know. If, I don't want to worry you, lads, but if, very much, if I'm very much mistaken, that girl, that girl up there is up out the duff, up the duff." <laughs> yeah, up the duff. Yeah. Oh, great! Like, and I want the bit that when Dalboy says, "One hot bath and we could get done for overcrowding." <laughs> when he's <laughs> lines, it's just like. How this came into John Sullivan's head, Chris, like, literally, this, the punch lines kept, kept on giving and giving, and literally, genius. Yeah, there's, there's so many in Only Fools and Horses, isn't there? If you watch other comedies, there might be, I don't know, about five or six in an episode, but Only Fools and Horses probably has about 20 or more in each episode. What I learned about John, and I think a lot of people would probably agree as well, is that he set up a gag for, like, maybe half, like, at the start... He put something in place for something to go off half an hour later, half through the episode. That's what I loved about it. Mm. Yeah, or a gag that people don't get straight away, like the Dave joke, and then it would grow and grow, and now it's you know legendary, really, isn't it? Well, I think I think one really that people always think, even now when you watch it, how is that funny? You know the bit in Dolly Boys Out right at the start when um, Marlene says they're going to name him Tyler, and obviously Delby says, well, if it was a girl, they call her Rufa. A lot of people didn't get that. It's something, isn't it? It's some of the humour is so subtle, and it'll be once it hits, yeah, very funny. Yeah, I find that in uh, that episode to Hull and Back, but that's probably because there's no canned laughter in it. Um, that you know, it doesn't sometimes people don't get that as much. That episode, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, that episode, <laughs> yeah, I can do bunny shadows though. Oh, and what, yeah. <laughs> I love it um, when they're running around Amsterdam. I love that bit, yeah. Makes you yeah. want to go there, doesn't it, just for those moments. But I've done a couple of locations. I've been to Amsterdam a couple of times. Um, yeah, it's very, um, very very iconic. But whenever I go somewhere now, if it's somewhere Only Falls and Horses related, um, I'll look for locations if I can. So how many of the locations do you think you've been to? Have you been to lots of them? Been Most to... All the ones in Bristol. Uh, um, um, I've done that two or three times in Bristol. Um, my significant other calls me an author geek. Well, there you go. There's best things to be in life. Um, the um, but yeah, I've, I want to try and do a few. I haven't done a few of them in London. I'd like to do obviously go to London and do. There's someone recently I've noticed on the the pages that's gone to a lot of the more um, obscure ones and um, some of them. But yeah, there's a, there's a few I'd love to go to. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I... There's there's this pub in London, isn't there, where um, Alan's wife, Alan Parry's wife, um, she has too much to drink, and that pub looks exactly the same. <laughs> well, it's um, it's there's a lot. The um, there's so many locations out there, um, and you watch an episode, and you I go, there's some episodes I've watched. Before over a hundred times and then actually even sometimes you watch me quite didn't notice that the other 99 times i've watched it but yeah it's um there's a lot more i'd like to visit but as you say most of it was filmed in bristol wasn't it not everybody knows that big fans know but yeah is after series four i think it was because it became too popular and they just couldn't do it without getting mobbed um so yeah i think from series four or um on until obviously the specials that's when they obviously moved to bristol yeah and back to that episode from prussia with love that's actually one of sue holdness's favorite scenes i believe it or not in only fools and horses yeah and that's again that hits a lot i mean it's the genius of his writing i mean it's, it's obviously how much marlene wanted a baby and how it was very tastefully and at the end dal could see how much it meant to her and how she you know it's very and yeah, it was. But for me, it's boy seals, seals aligned with that. Yeah, <laughs> I might be able yeah. to convince bars and all that, and literally. But how can I convince someone that my God, was the wee Armstrong for that one every single time? I'm barely laughing. Yeah. Oh. Me too. He's got a police record. <clears throat> yeah, so walking on the moon. <laughs> You've heard that one, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I'll play it for you later on if you like. You know. Um, <laughs> and I bought you a donut kebab. Um, long, uh, 
I can pronounce it right. Long arm, long legs of the oh god, long arms of the law. Well, long legs. Of, oh god, I can't pronounce it very anyway. right. Um, you were um, right the first time. Yeah. Uh, long legs of the law. Yeah. Only had one of them drinks. I promise, Chris. I only had one. <laughs> yeah, you sure. <laughs> um, oh, Chris, I can't speak French. I still struggle with English. <laughs> <laughs> That, that I absolutely love that the long length of the lo uh, I absolutely love that episode. Um, when I, as soon as it started playing, I love that. And right at the end, the comic timing is when he said, "Well, can I borrow some? Of that, uh, can I borrow some of that um, rafter shave, Dal?" I mean, he didn't know when to give up. What he did, did he with that? Oh, no, he said, yeah, yeah, he had a big thing about police women, didn't he? And that's an understatement. <laughs> uh, it's a bit for me in. Um, Go west, young man. When obviously he's in the, he's obviously telling Del Boy about his fetish, and, the, and I love Del Boy. It's a good job you step, stopped when you did, because these police cars cost a fortune. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, the bit where um, they're talking, Del Boy and Grandad are talking about it, and um, Grandad's like, "Well, can't, if that's all he wants, a police uniform, can't we?" You know, <laughs> get together and get him one. And then Del is like, he wants the policewoman to wear it. You know, he might be sad, but he's not dangerous. He might be perverted, but he's not dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Started playing the clip just now when he says, has he got a police record? <laughs> yeah, yeah, walking on the moon. Yeah, brilliant. brilliant. And of course, Rodney can't hold it in, can he? What they do for a living... He's not, he just can't, can he, because he can't think about it. And, of course, you've got that scene with I think, export gin, wasn't it? And then, and then <laughs> he's like, oh, no, we've got four more cases of it behind here. And, yeah, <laughs> it's just brilliant. Yeah, but it's the end that it gets me when he literally, he just doesn't know when to give up. When he can kind of borrow some aftershave and then tell them to try and kick his ass. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that, that was a great ending. It was. Okay, two more to go. Oh, are you going to do it? Not putting the pressure on you, but so far, so good. Eight out of eight. Hello, your minicab's arrived, Albert. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Dave? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Jahan just walks in. And he says, oh, can, um, what do you have to drink? N something non-alcoholic. And he turns to Mike, a pint of your best bitter. Oh, it's <laughs> really funny. But that... Repeat yourself? Sorry, it went funny. But that episode should be, um, hang on. No, oh, no, no. let me look at it right. Oh, no, hang on. It is... You can have some thinking time, don't worry. I know what episode it is, but I think there's the name two of that... it. Hang on a minute. The sea shall not have it. Oh, it's that oh, you'll, episode. you'll get it, surely. Oh, oh, oh really? Yeah, Uncle, I know the episode well, but it's the. You're right, the something. Go on, hang on. For some reason, divine, divine intervention. It doesn't really get mixed up with, with some episodes, um, but actually, that's the Frog's legacy. Well done. Yeah, you got it. The <laughs> the got you it. Yeah, great. So that's nine out of nine. On to the last one. We're running out of time now on our Zoom. <laughs> Who do people think we are? Eh? <laughs> we're the Trotters, and we're back. Yes! So the answer to number 10 there, Chris, it's uh, yeah, one of the last three episodes, and that's if you could see us now. Brilliant. 10 out of 10. Well done. You're the first one to do it. You definitely well, deserve that cocktail. Yeah. It's... Wow. I have... You know what? I've loved coming on tonight, Chris. So thanks for having me on. And it's, it's cheered me right up. Well, this is what Only Fools and Horses has done to people. Like, you probably, without realising it, as soon as you played a clip, I'm laughing. And this is, if I'm not having a good day or whatever, put only fours and horses on. And it is, it is such a medicine for people. Well, it's a massive medicine for me. It picks me up like nothing else will, really. So, bonnie de douche. Okay,